Welcome to the Moment of Truth, a program that teaches the truth of God's grace based on God's Word with Rev. Merrill Wallace. This program is sponsored by OCMTracking.com, your vehicle tracking of choice. OCM Tracking Unit is more than just a tracking system, combining the very best in fleet management, cost saving, and vehicle tracking in one simple to use web application. So check us out at OCMTracking.com. Well, praise the Lord. Today, I thank God that we are back again. And I praise God that I believe you are looking at the programs and you're learning something from them. It is my desire that every time you watch a program, you learn something good from the program. Um, today, I wanted to be talking about sin and sickness. So I want to talk to you about the effects of sin on sickness. We all know that um, how sin, sickness came. Sickness came because of sin, and sin came because of Satan. So if you want to remember, you can just remember SSS, because I know you used to drink SSS tonic. So anyhow, you have Satan, you will have sin, and then your door is open to sickness. But the bad thing, you never know what kind of sickness your door is being open to. So there is something that I want to talk today in the book of Matthew, chapter 9, and verse 1 to 8. I will not read all the verses. I might not read the verses at all. But I just want to be able to show you some things. In that Matthew chapter 1, chapter 9, verse 1 to 8, Jesus went on a boat and he went to his own city, his own village, his own part of the, uh, of the country. And the Bible says he had a big crowd and they brought a man to Jesus. And when they brought the man to, the, to Jesus, they mash up the house, the roof of the house, and they launched the man down. So five of them were making a big show. Four men carrying him, and the fellow himself was on a, a, a court or something. He was on something that was carrying him with. And Jesus, the Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith. Today, I want to talk to you about Jesus seeing your faith, and I want to talk to you about the bringing the man to Jesus and what Jesus told the man and what you should be, you know, careful about. Good. Let's see the first one. They brought the man to Jesus. I know a lot of you might be saying, if you'll be glad if Jesus was here. And I'm telling you, I'll tell if if Jesus was here, it would be worse for you. It means you would have to bring him to Jesus. So everywhere they went, they, you would have to carry somebody to meet with Jesus. But right now, you don't have to carry somebody to meet with Jesus. Jesus is with us all the time. It means it's all well and good, but if you're not saved, when I mean saved, I mean you're not washed in the blood, I mean, when I say washed in the blood, that might be a good religious term. I mean, accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Somebody might have to bring you to a place where a man of God who knows Jesus Christ as the Lord and personal Savior is to be able to pray for you. So they brought that man. But thank God, if you are saved, you, they don't have to bring you to a, a, a man today. Yes, you can still go if you feel, feel like, if you haven't got enough faith for yourself. But Jesus lives inside of you. From the time you are saved, he makes his abode on the inside of you. And because of that, you can understand that you have Jesus with you 24-7. He is with you all the time. It means you don't have to put up your head to pray. You can just put down your head because he lives inside of you and you can talk to him from the inside 
and say, Jesus, here I am, and tell him what your story is. Um, one of those things, privilege that we have, because Jesus is inside of us, and it is also a privilege that Jesus died. Man, it is a very good thing that Jesus died. I mean, I know you might be feeling sorry for him because you might be seeing the pictures with the crown of thorns and all those things and all those bleeding and all those things that he got. But Jesus, he did not, they did not kill Jesus. Jesus gave his life a ransom, the Bible says, for many people. So he gave his life. He gave his life. He gave himself to die in your place. So it means, yes, you had sin. You were supposed to die for your sin. But Jesus died for you. You had sicknesses. Jesus was, you were supposed to, hey, maybe get an amputation or maybe people carrying you because of your sickness. But Jesus died so that you could have health. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 8 and verse 17, that Jesus himself took, and I wanted to let you know the word is took. It means it's a past tense term. He took your sicknesses. The Bible says in another, in another place, he carried away your sorrows. He carried away your sickness and your disease by whose stripes you have been healed, one version says. And another version says, by whose stripes you were healed. So it tells us that, hey, we do not have to be bawling and squalling and beating the walls and rolling on the floor and crying to Jesus and tell him, hey, here I am. All we have to do is say, Jesus, I thank you very much that you died for me. I give you praise that you considered and you died for my sake. And if it was for me alone, you would have died. It means, Lord, I saw in your word somewhere where the Bible says, you took every sickness and disease for me on the cross of Calvary. So definitely, seeing that it's paid for, I will have it. And thank you for it. Thank you for it. So you keep on thanking God that you are healed by his stripes. Yes, you wouldn't see the healing as yet, but you keep on thanking God and having confidence and the assurance that Jesus Christ took your sicknesses, he took your diseases, and you just want to give him praise and you give him thanks for it. So everything that Jesus paid for, we can have. I want you to understand what Jesus paid for. It's like going into a restaurant and somebody has the money. And he paid for all the meals. And all we're supposed to do is sit and eat. So our job to do is to sit and eat. Everything that Jesus paid for for us. The Bible says that Jesus paid for everything. And he paid for everything. And he gave us, as I usually use as that scripture, he gave us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Hmm. Right. So let, let us see something. The Bible says we are healed. The Bible says we are forgiven. The Bible says in Jesus Christ we have redemption for his blood in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7 if you want to read it. And we have the forgiveness of sins. It means all our sins are forgiven. It means those sins that I committed when I was five years to 50 years, all those sins are forgiven. And all those sins I will, I will commit from 50 to 100, all those sins will be forgiven. The past sins, the present sins, and the future sins. But... The Bible says something that I want you to observe. And Jesus seeing their faith. Well, I heard a lot of preachers say, and I myself must have preached it. Well, Jesus must have seen their faith because he saw the fellas mashing up, mashing up a roof. 
and sliding on somebody, four people carrying them to get in the presence of Jesus. I mean, that is seeing their face. And somehow I believe that has some truth to it. But with the Bible, that doesn't really say everything. Because faith, we have to realize, is of the heart. So Jesus saw in the heart that they had confidence. If you have faith, it means you have confidence. He saw in the heart that they trusted him. It means they trust Jesus that, hey, if they could get that fella in front of Jesus, Jesus would heal them. It means they were fully persuaded in their heart. So you see, Jesus was looking on their heart. What other people couldn't see, Jesus was seeing. He saw the heart of the man. You see, so their heart, what they had in their heart, persuaded them. They were fully persuaded. That's what caused them to break up the roof. You see, because they were fully persuaded in their hearts that if they brought the man to Jesus, that Jesus would put his hand on him and Jesus would heal him. Let's see something else. When they came in, the Bible says, and Jesus seen the faith. He spoke to the man's sin. He says, son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. You understand that? Jesus is saying, there see he, his sins are forgiven him. That tells me, yes, it tells me, yes, Jesus can forgive all sins. But it tells me that somehow that man had committed some sin in his life that maybe brought him to that area of sickness. But not only that, maybe he could be confessing the sins of for God to forgive him all the time. And that is the same thing with us, with some Christians today. Sometimes when we do something wrong, we confess that sin all the time. It means we have sin consciousness. And because we have sin consciousness, then the faith of God cannot work for us when we have sin consciousness. Because sin consciousness is a breeder of unbelief. So when you have sin consciousness, hey, I did that. You think it's not that's why I'm not being healed? No. You just have to believe that you receive your forgiveness of sins as bad as it was, realize that the blood of Jesus have cleansed us from all sin and all unrighteousness and start believing God that you are clean. You are clean in spite of the sin, how much grave you think the sin was, in spite of how bad it was. Just believe that because I confess my sins, Jesus Christ paid the price already. And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17, I quote that scripture verse already, that in Jesus Christ, we have redemption. It means he paid for a price for it and we have forgiveness of sins. Thank God for forgiveness of sins and thank God for the blood of Jesus that forgives all our sins. The Bible says, in 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7, that God doesn't look as other men look. It means we had some other men there, some Pharisees, and they say, who's this man? You know, he can even act like God and pray he can forgive sin. You know, they didn't even say that. But again, to bring back a point that I made a while ago, Jesus knowing their thoughts and they said what they were saying in their hearts. You see, God looks on the heart 
and not on the outward appearance. So you see, these Pharisees, they were dressed in their robes and everything. So they were saying something in their hearts. They were saying something in their heart that, hey, who is this man that he can even forgive sin? Is he God? Jesus said, what? Well, for you to know that I can forgive sins, what is easier to say? Is it to say your sins be forgiven you? Or to tell that man to get up and walk? And he said, that you may know that Jesus, the Son of Man, has power on this earth to forgive sin. I will say to this man, rise up, take up your bed and go home. And the man rose up and he took up his bed and go. You see? So we see something here. Something that I want to rehearse. Number one, Jesus saw their faith. We have to understand that faith is of the heart. Number two, we realize that this man had a hindrance to receiving his healing. He didn't have sin, but he, because of a sin he must have committed a long time ago, he had sin consciousness. So Jesus had to get him, get rid of the sin consciousness and tell him, your sins be forgiven you. And then Jesus had to do a miracle for him. After the sin consciousness disappeared, the unbelief was, he got rid of the unbelief. He tell him, rise up and walk. Today, I want to tell you, my friend, ladies and gentlemen, whoever you are, Jesus Christ, if he is living inside of you, then that is a privilege. If you're not sure that Jesus Christ is living inside of you, just all you have to say is, Jesus, you died for my sins. Come into my life and live there. And I'll tell you, he said when he comes in, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Every time in your life, he will always be there. And then the next thing, he told the man, after his faith was pure, his faith was real, rise up and walk. Today, whoever you are, wherever you are, you can think of Jesus. Jesus Christ paid the price for you. You can take it now. You can take your healing right now. In whatever state you are, you can take that healing right now and start to do something that you couldn't do before. In the Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind the works of the enemy. We submit ourselves unto God that says with the stripes of Jesus we are healed. And we believe God and we believe you that we are healed and made whole from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet to the tip of our toe in Jesus' name. We are healed right now. So right now, take it and believe God, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.